Hello and welcome to the episode 223 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The start of a new career, the start of a new album, and the start of the last Beatles tour are among the stories we'll be focusing on today. On the 11th of August 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, had an evening engagement at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. One year later, in 1962, the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best, performed at the Odd Spot Club in Liverpool. In 1963, on this date, former Cavern Club bouncer Mal Evans, nicknamed Big Mal, started working for the Beatles. Evans was officially employed as their second assistant on the road. Tonight, the band, finally featuring Ringo Starr, was engaged at the ABC Theatre in Blackpool. 1964. The Beatles returned at the EMI Studios in London's Abbey Road to start the recording of their second album of the year. Between 7 and 11 pm, the band recorded 14 takes of Babies in Black, five of which complete. Then, the four were filmed as if having a performance, for a wild track mute video that BBC intended to use as background for the spin of one of their songs during the Top of the Pops program. The film was never used due to a disagreement between BBC and Beatles manager Brian Epstein over the band's fee. Also unused were the 13 attempts to improve on the song intro that George Harrison recorded before the end of the session. Instead, I can use all the help I can get to keep on producing the best music-related content I can. You already know what to do, right? If not, visit www.simonmas.com support and check out how you can make your preferences heard. Thank you! On the 11th of August 1966, the Beatles arrived in Chicago, Illinois at 4.55 pm for the start of what turned out to be their last American tour. Despite having a new album out, the band intended to perform the same repertoire of previous tour dates. Rock and roll music, She's a Woman, If I Needed Someone, Day Tripper, Babies in Black, I Feel Fine, Yesterday, I Wanna Be Your Man, Nowhere Man, Paperback Writer, I'm Down, and the occasional inclusion of Long Tall Sally. The Fabs thought that the difficulties of bringing on a stage their latest sound experiments overweighted any benefit of presenting them to screaming fans that most likely wouldn't have been able to hear a single note anyway. This already bleak outlook on the tour dates ahead wasn't helped by the tone of the press conference the Fabs held at their arrival at the Astor Tower Hotel, in the room of press officer Tony Barrow. We followed the development of the Jesus controversy in episode 63, 210 and 218 of What A Fab Day, and the topic was sure to be the focus of the conference, as it was. John Lennon was grilled as he offered his version of what had happened, and what he meant with his remarks on the Beatles being bigger than Jesus, but evidently it wasn't enough. He was forced to give an apology. The press was happy, the Beatles had been put in their place and, evidently, Jesus had been vindicated for now. But if you look at the video of the press conference linked in the episode description, you can see that John, Paul, George and Ringo were nonplussed. The incident, the tone of the press, the death threats received for their blasphemous remarks, did nothing but increase the Beatles' feelings against Turing. Moving forward to 1967, the Beatles were in Richard Davenant's studio in Thompson House, London, for a photo shooting. Avedon took several pictures of the band, four of which, one per Beatle, were chosen and modified with psychedelic effects. The new photos were first published in the US on the magazine Look on the 9th of January 1968. In UK, they were first published by the Daily Mirror one month later, with a chance for the readers to buy an enlargement of the set of photographs or even a poster. 
Let's close the episode with two events happened in 1969. It was on this day that John Lennon and Yoko Ono moved to their new home, Tittenhurst Park, bought for £145,000, about £2,430,000 in 2020 money, from Peter Cadbury, son of Sir Egbert Cadbury of the Chocolate Empire. The Lennons spent twice that amount in renovations, which included the creation of an artificial lake and the setting up of a private recording studio in the house. In other news, between 2.30 and 11.30 pm, John Lennon, Paul McCartney and George Harrison worked on overdubs at the EMI Studios. It was the day that I Want You acquired the She's So Heavy subtitle, after the trio recorded the harmony part to the 18th of April version of the song. Characteristically undecided on which version was better, John had the vocals added to the Trident Studio Master of the same song, too. Then, George added more guitar parts on Here Comes the Sun, and the three Beatles overdubbed vocal harmonies on Oh Darling. This harmony work completed the song and was the last contribution that John Lennon ever made to a Beatles record. Today's episode ends on this note. Tomorrow we'll see how the first concert of the last Beatles tour went. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.